from Brooklyn, New York, where bar patron Sidewalk Pew could pass for a Jackson Pollock painting. It's Arts Inside with Andrew Gadoni. Tonight, fashion designer Juan Carlos Garcia, plus Arts Inside poetry shorts. I'm Andrew. Here on the show, we feature some of New York's finest neighborhood talent from all five boroughs of New York, and I'm certainly glad you could join us here today. What, what are you doing? Hi. You know, it says here that doing too much of this public access stuff is not good for your general mental health. Do you have any response to that? No, I don't. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm sorry to hear you feel that way. Well, it's, it's not me. It's, 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 you know, it's the verbiage right here. Well, that book looks older than uh, the uh, inception of cable access, so I think you're just sort of telling me a little, uh, you know, fib I'm there. I'm trying to put you on the spot, Mr. Thank you. Goodurning. While I'm sitting here with the guest, mm-hmm. I'm going to be peering over and looking at you. And just... I'm going to peer back. All right. Mm-hmm. And we'll see who wins later. Mm-hmm. The staring contest. Yeah. It's on. It's on. Mm-hmm. Our guest tonight, originally from Guadalajara City, Mexico, is now a garment district fashion designer who started sewing at the tender age of eight. He continued his vocation well into his teens, designing wedding dresses and earned a scholarship at Mexico's esteemed fashion design school, Moda Estilo, meaning fashion and style. After settling here in America, he's run his own store and design firm and continues to design for the fashion industry in America. And it's a pleasure to have him here on the show. Please welcome Juan Carlos Garcia. So uh, welcome to the show, Juan. Pleasure to have you. Oh, thank you so much for your invitation. Sure, absolutely. Um, what neighborhood do you hail from, by the way? Where are you living now? I'm living here in Brooklyn and Crown Heights. Ah, yes. It's, uh, as the kids say, an up-and-coming neighborhood. Yes. But very good. A lot of, uh, you know, restaurants and things like mm-hmm. that. New places cropping up, certainly. So tell us how fashion and clothing started for you. What made you get into it? Well, my mom, she used to have a boutique. And I start helping her sewing, making samples for, you know, for people in my country in Mexico. So it's how I started it. So you know, helping my mom. And you began at the age of eight sewing. Actually, mm-hmm. how yes. did you pick that up? Well, I was kind of like easy because every day seeing my mom making clothes, so it was just like natural, I guess. And then, you know, when when I really start making like seriously is when my mom suggested to me to I should go to fashion school so then I did but you know that was uh that was how I started making clothes how did you pick this up as a passion how did you become one with you know sewing and putting things together making things out of fabric why did that appeal to you well it's just like something like you know I get very inspired when I see a fabric. As, as soon as like I see a fabric, I immediately in my mind, I can see a dress, or I can see a jacket, or you know, a pants or something. It just like comes something like, you know, like when I go to the fabric store, for example, I can be hours and hours there, because in my mind is all this like uh, runway, you know. So it's it's very it's very easy for me to. To, to see a fabric and then in my mind is a dress. You have an eye for it. Yes, I, I can say so. <laughs> That's good. That's good. I like that. So if I were to hold up, you know, a plaid, a little bit of plaid fabric, you might be able to see something, some sort of concept. Yes, yes, absolutely. Well, that's good. Um, how did you develop your fashion sense? How did that come about? Well, I've, I've been changing since I moved to, to, to the U.S. Uh, I used to like, like, you know, like very glamour and, you know, like a lot of craziness. But now that, um, you know, that you can really see how people wear clothes in New York, you know, I need to to realize that, you know, like the craziness and all this stuff is not what really people wear. 
So, you know, like I'm more now into wear, ready to wear, uh, more calm down, more contemporary, more artistic, you know, more tasteful. How do clothes, would you say, make a statement about somebody, especially in a town like this? Mm -hmm. If you have bankers, you know how bankers dress. If you have people who are in fashion, of course you know how they dress. Yes. Usually very boldly. Yes. Like how how do you how do you handle that translation? What do you what what does it what does all this stuff mean to you? Well, uh, it's I always love to to see how people put things together here in New York. You know, it's just amazing to see how. Um, you know, some people they can be wearing like a, something really simple, but then they have like this vintage or this fur or you know all these crazy colors. So it's really challenging to to create something new on top of all those things plus all these you know great designers here in america so i guess i can say that um that i just i just do what i can and you know to do my best to to create something new on top of that so it's it's tough but um i mean especially here in new york but uh you know i mean i'm being i guess successful or you can say that your clients must appreciate it certainly because you're creating products that are, are an extension of people's self-expression which is great mm -hmm. but the clients tell me about who they are and a uh, couple noteworthy ones and uh, tell me what you do for them what you've done lately well i start here in new york uh, doing a lot of freelancing for different designers and uh, can i say names yeah of course oh, okay well, like Leila Sham and um, Idris Me, uh, Alice and Trixie, you know, well-known companies. But then, um, you know, I, I, you know, and now I'm working for Norma Kamali. Uh, so she's also, you know, one of the main uh, superstar designers here in New York. So uh, working for all these people, you know, that like I learn a lot, and you know that taught me that I can I can do more that I, you know, when I was living in Mexico. Well, what's the synthesis in making to making the bigger picture or making and deciding what to do if you're given that liberty? Well, first of all, you know, you know, uh, designers, we need to follow trends. We cannot just like, I mean, a lot of like the biggest designers, they can, they can do whatever they want. But, uh, right now, you know, like are the new designers like me, uh, we need to follow those trends. So if a big designer creates something like, for example, lace or, you know, put it like this color, we kind of like need to follow that because, you know, it's what is going to sell in the stores. So you cannot just like say, it, oh, I want this green when it's not in trend, you know, like we need to follow like, it's kind of like rules, but not really rules. If you want to fill me in on more of that process, you know, from mm -hmm. making the design, getting it approved, to the manufacturing. Mm -hmm. How does that go? Well, first of all, they need to be approved by the, you know, by the, what is going to sell, first of all. Because you, you can create beautiful clothes, but uh, you need to make sure that that clothes is going to sell. So, you, you know, you need to have a team for people that can tell you what they really think. And then, uh, you know, it starts for that because sometimes you create beautiful dress and then everybody say oh it's beautiful but it's not going to sell so you need to be aware of that you know and the end of the day is a business 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 thing you, you want to be successful you need to also sell. so after that you know like basically you know do you, you do a sketch you do a croquis you do flats you do the patterns the patterns go in production the production goes to the factory and from the factory, you know, it goes straight to the, to the stores. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, it's like a big chain. And, you know, in, in your way, they can be, the product can be stopped if somebody doesn't like it. Sure, of course. Uh, well, we have Liz here, of course, and uh, you had uh, done some uh, dressing <laughs> for her. Um, or some 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 sort of uh, you want to show show us a little bit of uh, well, what what you did with Liz yeah, and stand up Liz please. Well, uh, you know Liz is my friend and I went to her closet, <laughs> and then uh, you know she told me that she wanted me to 
to pick a garment for her on her own clothes. So, you know, like denim, you know, like the jeans always is going to be in. And, you know, like, because, you know, like she's a petite, so I wanted just to, to put a jacket on it and, you know, like stripes is always in fashion. Proof that, you know, recycling goods does work. I am and more dynamic having walked in the building. Yes, you are. I noticed that. I like it. I do. It's, uh, you know, I think blacks are definitely your colors. Just a little hint of red, certainly. Mm -hmm. You know, things that are slightly more muted that bring out your face. So I think in that sense, it, it's, uh, it works. Definitely works, and it's, it's good. Yeah, it's, it's, it's simple. It's fashion. What are you working on now? I'm working for Norma Kamali. So I am the, I'm the technical design, and also I help with the patterns and the QC, uh, control quality. Mm -hmm. So, you know, working there Monday to Friday. Well, it can be a grind, but I think the satisfaction comes from knowing that when the clothing hits the shelves or, you know, the racks, as mm -hmm. it were, um, knowing that you had a hand in those designs has got to be very, very gratifying. Yeah, yeah, because uh, she's, uh, she's a great designer and she's very nice and... Uh, you know, every time when she has a collection, she she always uh, include her names and her films. Um, you know, in the in the runway shows, we always uh, you know she's always uh, mention us and you know give us the credit that you know for our their, our hard work. So one last thing, tell me about the pattern making because people can often see a uh, a fabric and they want a simple shirt made out of it. But, um, you know, you may see the bigger picture, you know, much like a swatch of a paint. Mm -hmm. You have to picture in big, think the big picture. You know, how, how does one do that? How do you train your mind to, to think in those terms? Where, where does that come from for you? Okay. Uh, when I was in college, uh, I was really good for, for draping and pattern making. And, in, you know, I was always like ahead of the, all the students because when I see a uh, a dress, I see also a pattern, you know, how many pieces, where the zipper goes, you know, all the details for, for forming a dress. But, uh, you know, it's just like, it's almost like a architecture, you know, like you need to build, you know, like a dress for this fabric. So it's, it's just like, you need to be very good in mathematics and also a uh, very good drawing because, you know, you need to draw and, and do the pattern. And, you know, it's very easy to make a pattern for me because, you know, like, we make a size zero. So it's like, you know, models, they always look beautiful no matter what. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but for, from that pattern, we create our production. If the, the model looks good, then we, we expand that to, to, the, to the regular customers, you know, like to the regular bodies. What do you have behind you? I couldn't notice you have a little black. Oh, bottle. I find this, uh, probably I'm going to buy them. <laughs> I find this uh, over there in the rack, and I was... You found this at, uh, here at Film Biz? Yeah, 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 and I was like, oh my gosh, I need to get this, because, you know, the fabrics and the textures, they are very, like, very good. I would totally recommend it that they come here to, to shop. I find this dress, and, you know, I was like, oh, you know, some girl can just, like, just put it in, and looks ready to to go to a club or something nice what do you like best out of your uh, collection uh i like this one probably you know like a scarf you know right now you see the scarves everywhere even if it's in the summer people they just like wearing it you know they just like twist it and then you know just put it in and it looks good looks very in a fashion mm -hmm. i love it very nice very nice i heard that you have a fashion line coming out Yes, uh, you know, I, I came thinking what is the, what woman wants, <laughs> and I created a line of a lot of jackets, and I think, I don't know, I'm, I want to do something different because usually I always do dresses, and you know, they always sell, but, uh, but you, when you are in the subway, just an example, as you say, you always see a woman with a jacket. No matter what, it can be denim, leather, you know, in the morning, if it is not cold, they were in jackets. So I was thinking, oh, you know, like, I can do a lot of jackets, and, you know, I'm being creating 
really like really neat styles. So you know, like I I would love to show you some, but you know, unfortunately, I didn't bring anything. But uh, well, that's all right. Through the magic of video and television, yes. viewers already see what you're talking about. Yes. So uh, we're covered. <laughs> Don't you worry. Okay. Good. Um, thank, thank you, you very much, Juan. I appreciate you being on here. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Much, thank Juan you, Carlos Garcia. Everyone. Anytime. We'll be uh, right back. Welcome back to Arts Insight. If you're just tuning in, you missed a wonderful guest by the name of Juan Carlos Garcia, fashion designer. And uh, our lovely Liz here is sitting in detention. I'm sitting in detention, but I'm, I'm sitting in style because Juan Carlos raided my closet and drawers and came up with, he dressed me tonight. Well, you look so good. My outfit is this, and then he's directed me on makeup as well. So if I look different than I usually do in Arts Insight, it's because I have a fashion designer. And in you've, my got, closet today. you've got some books too. I do. I'm, I'm so studious. Yes. So among school ch children, hi kids. Summer class. Summer school for summer all of Summer school us. for yeah. you. You're like school in summertime, Liz. Uh, yeah, plenty of class. No. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. You got me. Plenty of class. We've got a uh, another segment for you uh, kids watching. Uh, we call this Arts Insight Poetry Shorts. These are little snippets heard around uh, open mics, poetry clubs, places like uh, n name some clubs. I mean, I, I'm I'm uh, I'm out of it. Well, you it's the New Yorkian New Yorkian Poets Ca Cafe. Poets Cafe is still there. The, the poetry, um, the Bowery. Bowery, yeah, Bowery, Down Bowery there, Poetry Bowery. Club, been there. That's a great have, place. I think we should have what they have over in our Regents Park, is it in London, where people kind of just go to the park and make a podium and speak. But the Occupy movement, you can see that. That does happen, where you just have public speaking just happening. Public speaking and open word, too. Yeah, an open word, too. It's kind of, a, it can be like kind of a rant. There's a lot of ranting going on. Well, it's but expression. But the Occupy so. movement's going to keep going. Have you seen any of it uh, recently? I live in a bubble. I don't know anything about that stuff. No? I, 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 live, um, I live in a shack in, uh -huh. a, in sort of a six by eight. And I, I get I get my news from people from from rumor and yeah. uh, secondhand word. Well, it seems to be that the Occupy movement has kind of started to spill into everyone occupying their space and trying to bust out the status quo that we really don't want. So it's about also occupying what everybody doesn't want to happen. I kind of bust it out and then uh, make new changes. Well, like, uh, let's yeah, occupy so. the airwaves with people's self-expression, and uh, here's a little taste of Arts Insight Poetry Shorts. Enjoy. If you wait but don't want, if you want but don't take, if you take but don't use, if you use but don't care, if you care but not much, the petty demon comes. The petty demon says not all of you are wanted, not everyone is needed, a few may be accepted, there's scarcity, you see. There are no loaves and fishes, not for the likes of you. A few baguettes for babies, some caviar for me. There's just enough to shit and sleep, but not enough for thee. The petty demon shrieks. Time is money. Sell short, eat to win, assume the position. In the world, in the angry material world, there are men who are not men, men whose imaginations never rise above the docks and plains whose imaginations squat upon the positions of power. If the petty demon bothers you, here's what you say, tell him, I don't know about your lawyers' fees, your MDs, your CEOs, your deep freeze. I do know that the blind man is perfect, that there's more to life than irony and squealing like a stuck pig, that the truth is hard, but you can stand on it. That time isn't money or a threat, but a gift. As you assume your position in the world, do not love men who are not men, whose imaginations never rise. Walk tall, walk with God, assume nothing, take a position. Said it was her first time eating an apple, but had to hide the truth. Having been a seller in the market two towns over, she bit into each of her wares, offered only the sweetest. The buyers found it odd. 
then realized it made their next bite easier. The devil happened along one day and noticed Eve's pink lady cheeks, her own beauty breasts, and ripening delicious buttocks. He knew she knew her way around. The devil pointed to his choice. When she bent over to make change, he snatched her, planted her in the garden. Adam never really saw the fruit, only Eve's extended hand and her green eyes holding the seeds. This is for our bartender. Drop title. <clears throat> Dan McCarthy, raised in the big sea, behemoth Canada. Swims, bikes for miles. Dan and the Big Apple, still an athlete, still five years in a basement, standing, serving behind the bar. Dan McSee going to the BK, workplace with windows, room for his vibes. Musicians, poets, can thrive in the tiny, the dark, cool, acidified, wearing black. <laughs> Colors, Sounds, words also need to amplify, expand, to serve us, to make them happy. Dan, no more basement of poets for you. Cycle, swim, play your vibraphone, let in the light, breathe all the air you need. <laughs> She could walk the same mile that you walk and never utter a word. You'd never hear her whine or complain, but it'd be fine if she did. You might pass her today on a train, on a street in a car. But you'd never really know the distance she's traveled thus far. Like a rose of Jericho, born in a hard place, but she's learned how to grow. Like a rose of Jericho. May her feet always hold her up strong Though the road may be long May her hope stay alive For a rose of Jericho In the desert the sun beams down on the shimmering sand She's covered in black Down to the tips of her hands She dreams about places with names Like Paris and Spain Someday she may get there Today she's just praying for rain Like a rose of Jericho Born in a hard place But she's learned how to grow Like a rose of Jericho May her feet always hold her up strong Though the road may be long May her hope stay alive Like a rose of Jericho I followed her eyes as she scanned the steps of her feet 
Must feel strange This place called New York Sea of concrete Or a row Of Jericho Born in a hard place But she's learned how to grow Like a rose Of Jericho May her feet always hold her up strong Though the road may be long May her hope stay alive For a rose of Jericho For a Thank you. Naturally, if you have questions, comments, hate mail, death threats, they can all be made to the Arts Insight hotline. Uh, the number is here on your screen. And uh, yes, there's also our website death where you threats. can check out our Vimeo clips and much more at uh, artsinsight.com. We'd love to hear from you. We really we want to hear really, what you have to say. We really, really want to hear we from you. We want the love. We, we want the love and we, we need it. Love. Bad. Um, thank you for watching Arts Insight. Make it a good one and uh, have a good night. See you soon. Don't drink and drive. Or don't bike and drive, rather. That's very bad. <laughs>